In 2017, we evaluated the effect of seeding date, seeding rate, and seed treatment on winter wheat seeded into barley stubble, which had been taken off as green feed. It's great to seed winter wheat into green feed stubble because it comes off early and doesn't have a lot of trash. Historically, the optimum seeding date for seeding winter wheat has been considered to be August 30th, with yields starting to decline sharply as seeding is delayed beyond September 15th. It can be hard to seed this early, but research from this study and others recently conducted across the prairies have determined the optimum seeding rate has moved a week into the fall. Past studies have also found wheat yields can benefit from higher seeding rates and seed treatment. To demonstrate these practices, the following factors were evaluated. The first factor looks at three seeding dates in the fall of 2016. These were August 29th, September 12th, and September 29th. At each of these seeding dates, seeding rates of 250 and 450 seeds per meter squared were evaluated. And finally, the seed was either left bare or treated with Roxel WW for each of the seeding dates and rates. This gave us a total of 12 treatments in the end for comparison. In this study, crop emergence was the same for each seeding date with the low seeding rate producing about 181 plants per meter squared on average, and the high seeding rate producing 292 plants per meter squared on average. Surprisingly, the Raxel treated seed significantly produced fewer plants per meter squared. This doesn't necessarily mean the seed treatment hurt the emergence. There could have been other confounding factors that weren't controlled. The treated and untreated seed was obtained from a seed producer and was supposed to be from the same seed lot. This may or may not have happened. Also, the treated seed may have metered differently and wasn't applied as heavily as the bare seed. That too is a possibility. But having said that, there was another strange interaction. Lower emergence with the Roxel treated seed was worse at the higher seeding rate. You can see at 250 seeds per meter squared, the green bars, that the treated seed has 16% fewer plants. And at 450 seeds per meter squared, the blue bars, treated seed has 44% fewer plants. I'm not sure what's going on there, but the differences are statistically significant. Obviously, there can be issues around improper seed treatment affecting germination. However, when applied properly, treated seed can result in better emergence in crop years, but it doesn't happen all the time. Yvonne Lolly with the University of Manitoba led a large winter wheat study across the prairies. She found seed, treated, seed treatment could improve plant stands and yields, but not at every location or every year. She found positive responses in 2014 and 2015 but not in 2016. Most of the positive responses occurred in Manitoba. In our study, we found seed treated with Raxel WW did yield slightly more, but the differences were not statistically significant. Here, we're looking at the main effects of seeding rate on winter wheat yield. Though not statistically significant, the seeding rate of 250 seeds per meter squared produced a couple more bushels than the seeding rate of 450 seeds per meter squared. Again, not exactly the results we were expecting, but 2017 was a bit dry. There may have been a greater interplant competition with the higher seeding rate for limited moisture. Seeding date had a large impact on maturity, which can be seen in this picture. The winter wheat on the left-hand side of this picture was seeded a month earlier the previous fall, and it certainly is maturing earlier. Now, let's catch up with Heather, who's out in the field, and she will give you a better look at the maturity differences between these seeding dates. Through no fault of her own, she has the seeding dates a little wrong, but they're close. Here's winter wheat seeded in August 30th. And here's winter wheat seeded at September 30th. Although there doesn't seem to be much of a yield difference right now, there definitely is a maturity difference. So I guess we'll see in the future if the yield difference actually pans out. 
and here's Mike in the future with the results. Well, Heather, as it turns out, the earliest seeding date did not produce the highest yield. In fact, it yielded significantly lower than the later two seeding dates. The optimum seeding date turned out to be September 12th. Though these results are a little contrary to historical recommendations, they do support recent research by Yvonne Lally with the University of Manitoba. Her multi-site study concluded that the optimum seeding date for winter wheat has shifted about a week into the fall. So for Yorkton, producers sh should still be in good shape to seed winter wheat mid-September if conditions are good. In this study, even seeding on September 29th resulted in a good yielding wheat crop that achieved the three leaf stage before the snow fell. This fall in 2017, I seeded another winter wheat trial on September 28th. And because of dry conditions, the crop only managed to just get to the second leaf stage before the snow fell. Stay tuned to see how that trial survives.